right, today on the channel we're going to be taking a look at a new emulation console that I picked up from Amazon. First and foremost, it comes in a hard shell carrying case, which is nice, but it's also unnecessary if you ask me, because honestly, how many people are traveling around the world with their little emulation consoles? So this is an Android-based device. Here's the device itself. I have A95X there on the front. Go ahead and peel off the little protective layer. So as far as ports, looks like we've got a USB 3.0, a USB 2.0, micro SD card slot there with the little QA sticker over it. We have our 3.5 millimeter audio, HDMI, uh, ethernet, digital audio, little rubber feet on the bottom. Very small device, fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, iPhone for comparison, so it is pretty, pretty small footprint, which is nice. The rest of the accessories we get, Standard little one foot long HDMI cable. So make sure you have a better one because one foot's not very long. Uh, included remote for the Android side of things. Uh, so this does dual boot. It uses Emulec for the emulation side and then it has, of course, Android software. So you can load uh, your own streaming applications or play Android games on this. So watch Disney Plus, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, you name it. But honestly, these days, uh, most every TV or smartphone can do that already. So uh, we're just going to be covering the retro gaming aspect of it. Comes with two wireless controllers. These are knockoff PlayStation 2 controllers. Uh, they're battery powered. Open up the tray there in the back. Here's the USB dongle. Put the batteries in the back. Plug in the USB dongle into the device and voila, you've got wireless controls. But I always tell people these aren't the worst, they aren't the best, but honestly, I just prefer to set them aside and use my own. Uh, this device does have Bluetooth and wireless built in, so you can use a Bluetooth controller um, and wireless internet or ethernet, as you can see by the port. Uh, me personally, I've got my own preferred USB controllers that I'll, I'll play with, and I honestly recommend you do the same. And we have power cable here, and pretty short leash, but nice thing it does have a toggle on and off for the power and then it looks like we've got our hyperbase user manual and then some uh, yeah instructions on the controls themselves so let's go ahead and plug it in all right once you connect a controller to the system for the first time you will have on-screen prompts to go ahead and map your controller simply follow the on-screen prompts push the buttons on your controller that correspond to the command that is on the screen and it'll be up and going really, really quickly with your control setup. As far as the user interface, this should be familiar with anybody that's seen some of my previous videos on these sort of emulation devices. So if you don't need to see how to set this up or how the user interface works, I got timestamps below in the video description box so you can skip ahead. Uh, for those newcomers, you're gonna wanna hit start on your controller, brings up your main menu. So you can change individual settings for games or universal settings. So meaning every single game you make a change automatically goes across the board. But we're gonna show you global changes and how to do that type of thing. You're gonna to go to game settings. Uh, you can change the aspect ratio. So if you want it widescreen or if you want it 4.3, 5.4, whatever the native aspect ratio is for the game system you're playing, you can change that. Uh, this will be turning on or off the bezels. So the little graphic things that cover up that dead space if you're playing games in those shorter aspect ratios like 4.3 on a 16 by 9 television. There's rewind functionality, saving, shaders, latency, all those type of things. Auto save states and loads. Yes, you can save your games and load them uh, depending on the emulator, but almost all emulators have that natively built in. A user interface, so you can change the theme. The stock one is the Alec Full Solo. It also has a secondary one called Crystal. I like the Alec full one. I just think it's aesthetically a little more pleasing. Uh, you can configure your themes. You can have the clock on screen help. If you find that the games on here is a little bit daunting as far as the list and the sheer quantity, you can change the systems displayed so you can unselect all the different ones you don't really care about. And as the system reboots, it will take those out of the equation and you won't have to see those anymore. And you can pop out the little SD card on this device, load up your own ROMs if you want to do that. So if you have a game out there that for whatever reason didn't make the list on this manufacturer's setup, 
You can go ahead and add it yourself. Just pop the SD card into your computer, drag and drop ROM files into the correct corresponding folder and you'll be good to go. And as far as changing single game settings, you're gonna go into a folder, go ahead and select whatever game you wanna play. You just normally hit the A button, but long press that same A button and it brings up this little subcategory over here. You can go to advanced game options and this is where you would change things like the emulator. So by default, it'll always be on auto. So if you're playing a game and you realize, oh man, the performance on this is just not great. This is where you'd wanna come in and kind of tweak the emulator settings and see if maybe selecting a different emulator is going to give you a better performance. Uh, I find that some of the Nintendo 64 games work great. Others need a different emulator. So it's kind of a case by case basis. But for the most part, the auto slash default will get you through 90% uh, of the games without issue. It's those other 10% that you're randomly going to run into where you're like, wow, this doesn't play great at all. This is how you'd want to go in there and change that emulator. That way you can get some better performing gameplay. Not such a bad thing to retreat, bruh. Shows you're clever. You fight again tomorrow, eh? Two, count it! Yeah, two, 
In a nutshell, I'm very impressed with how well this is subcategorized and organized as far as the games. Like I said, there's not a lot of fluff on here. Uh, big downside to me is that PSP on here is just a really mixed bag. I would say half the games on here play well, the other half not so great. And I can tell this was kind of hand selected for games that should be performing better on this device. So I would not really consider Sony PlayStation Portable to be anything worthwhile on here. PlayStation works great. It's the other systems when you get in the 3D stuff, so the Atomus Wave, Dreamcast, and Naomi. Uh, for the most part, they do work great, but you will have those games that don't work the best. Like I said, there's always that outlier. Um, sometimes you can change the emulator settings, sometimes you can't. But for the most part, they did hand select and hand choose a lot of these games that should perform pretty well on here. They just missed a couple testing them um, that don't belong on here at all just because for whatever reason they don't perform adequately on this device. Positives and negatives of this little device as I see it. So small footprint, that is a positive. Uh, performance for the most part is on par with everything I've tested in the past. It doesn't really do anything new per se. So it's not gonna be playing PlayStation 2, GameCube, uh, Nintendo Wii or anything like that. So in reality, this chipset is kind of dated. It's the same old, same old. Uh, the Biggest pro in my book on this is that it doesn't have the unnecessarily bloated file structure where you're getting all sorts of game files that aren't necessary to enjoy games. Um, so that is nice as far as searching and just being able to play the games and not spend hours and hours trying to sort through things. You do have the search function built in there with the Emulec front end, so that's good. Price point on par with everything I've already kind of seen. The controls, same old, same old. So. Uh, I'm, it's nothing really new and improved other than just a better structured file system in my opinion. So you be the judge, let me know what you think in the comments down below. And that does it for this video review. If you enjoyed the content, make sure you hit the like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot.